Okay, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more near. Um, I know last time I said I would do some level grinding and um, upgrade my weapons. Because I thought I had to upgrade all weapons to their um, final all level 4 forms. Turns out that's not it. You just have to have all the weapons. And then you could um, just go beat the game. So I'm like, okay, I'll do that. And then, yeah, um, the money trophy, I didn't realize you had to have one million gold all at once. It can't be cumulative. Oh, yeah. Like, um, yeah. So before I had, like, close to 200,000 gold, I shouldn't have spent my money on stuff. I should have just kept accumulating. So, yeah. I'm gonna have to grind money. One way of grinding money is by continuously growing uh, pink, peach, and lunar tears. And selling fish. But it's okay because one of the trophies is catch every type of fish and catch the rhizodont, which will happen when I catch every type of fish. So... Yeah, I'm gonna have to do a bit of fishing. So fishing will help with the money too, because I don't need the fish for anything. So... Oops, whoa. Why did I send it to that one? I wanted to kill this one first. Yeah, so my plan will be... Updated plan is to... Uh... Do... Ending A, which I'm gonna attempt right now. And then rush through, get ending... Oops! Get ending B. Yeah. No, wait. Before I rush to get ending B, I need to do the World of Nightmares to get the last three weapons from that. Uh, and then do ending B. And then rush through ending C and D. But before I do ending D, I'm gonna have to make a backup of my saves. Ugh. Wait. Go to you. Whoops. Ha! You're on my territory now. Break down their guard. Medicinal herb and strength capsule. Don't need anymore. Cool. Oh yeah, and one day I need to try to do my 15-hour uh, trophy run. And that I will be doing a brand new full playthrough on easy mode. Just to... Um, get through all the fights and bosses faster. So that'll be my plan. Ugh, don't guard. Yeah, so if I want a level grind, I could do it here while I'm making my way up the tower. Into the Shadow Lord's castle, but, um, yeah. Wait, are they dead? Ah, they're dead. Good job, guys. Hey Silk, how are you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Monday! Near Replicant. <laughs> Whoa, what is that? Excalibur Noodle? What the heck? You're just a noodle. That's really cute. It's the noodle. Mm, I love noodles. Noodles so yummy. Yeah, so I don't have to fight any of these guys. I could just rush up. And I will because this music's kind of scary. Oh, nope. If you're right in my face, then I must kill you. Oh, where'd you come from? Oh, more popping up. Oh, is he dead? Oh, really? Cool. Wait, what other emos are those? Dr. Pepper Cheese Melt? Oh, oh, why? Why, dude? And... Gun? Wait, let me look at that closely. Oh, it's like, give me you! Oh, that's really cute! Are those emos for your channel? Because that's awesome, dude! Wait, if that's for your channel, that means you made... You made affiliate! Yay! Congratulations! Wee! Wait, 
wait, then did you start streaming already? If you started, then I gotta like watch some of your videos. Ah, 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 ah. Where are my friends? My friends are my power. Kingdom Hearts. When did you start streaming? And then this cycle here. Oh! What a jerk! He knocked me off! You jerkwad! Now I have to run all the way back! Oh my gosh! I was streaming about three weeks ago. Three weeks ago? What? The... Why didn't you say anything to me? Time? Excuse you, sir. Oh my gosh! Now I have to check it out. So, you... so like you're building Gundams on stream, or what you doing? Oh, the boss music's still playing because I started the fight. Content is hard to describe. Oh, so you're a variety streamer? You just do a little bit of everything? It's kind of cursed? <laughs> what? <gasps> wow! He broke my guard! The heck? Oh, this is why I come back to fight these guys because they, they have complex machines. That's why it's worth fighting them. Okay. A little bit of everything. Cool, 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 cool. I will definitely check it out after I finish streaming. Wait, what's in the box? What's in the box? Medicinal herb. Cool. Oh, wait, this isn't boss music. Oh! Did they just start playing this song because I'm starting to climb up the tower. And my magic not this, please. Thanks for dropping nothing. Oh! Oh. You gave me a heckin' scare. So weak. Great, big guys up here too. I forgot. Ooh, uh. I forgot he breaks my block. Ah, uh, Emil, heal me. Or what are these? Are these medicinal herbs? Uh, yes, they are. Cool. And then... I have to go in. But how do you enjoy streaming so far? I know a lot of people, when they first start, they feel a bit awkward. It's like, you just gotta keep doing it. And you'll get used to it. Health sap. Oh, I'm full up on that. Oh. Hi, guys. You're weak. You're nothing. Did I really have to go all this way just to get up the next door? Yes, I do. Because Lost Shrine Roof is where I have to go. Waiting for dudes to pop out. No dudes? Nope, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how dare you attack me from behind?
get pushed off the edge. Go! Or not, go. Where's the gold come? Are you buffing them? Excuse you. Okay, magic guys, you die now. No more buffs for you. big guy doesn't come out. I don't want to fall down the floor again. Okay. And we go. Wait, it was to the roof, right? Yeah, I had to go up. Yeah, to the place where I first found Vice, and then the portal should open. fell off. Woohoo! Okay, it was- whoop! Not this way. That's a totally open floor. What are you? Antidotal weed. I think I've only gotten poisoned once in this game so far. It's from Scorpion. Wait, not this way. Yeah, here we go. Whoa! Oh, you scared me, you jerks! Oh, wow, who hit me this much? What? Should I level up more? I'm being kind of careless and just taking all the hits. Roof time. The Orby boy went at it. Ugh. Magic capsule, okay. Emil, you wanna heal me? Health salve and health salve. Man, and maybe I'll use a health set and get one. Don't want to wait for a meal. What? Excuse me? Do I have to push it closer, really? What? Let me up. There we go. Okay. And then. Whoop. Where am I going? This way. Nope, I don't hear you. Cool. Let's go! Such an ominous sight. And yet I find it strangely nostalgic. Yeah. This is where Vice and I first met. We first fought together. Wow! This is where you used to live? Vice? Wasn't Emil here? Well, with yes, us? I suppose. In a when we fought sense. Hansel here? Pretty nice digs for a floating magazine. At least it was free from annoying hussies like yourself. Why? No, I was definitely here. You cannot turn back from this point. Continue, yes. And now the path is We were open. here to fight Hansel to get a fragment here. Why? Why are they so shocked that but what? Okay. To the hell portal! Heck yeah! We're in the end game now. Ooh really hope I don't screw up the battles here. I remember when I first saw this, I was like, this, this is so beautiful. Like, flowers, man. I mean, they had flowers in Seaport, too, but, you know. Just this idea of a greenhouse. So pretty. Okay, so one of the weapons. There should be a box around here. Do I have to go by the pigeons? Okay, box. Or not? Are there boxes up there? I really want to make sure I don't mind them. I don't miss these weapons. 
box. Here we go. Yeah. Phoenix sword. Got it. Uh, weapons. One-handed sword. Oh, no, wait. Phoenix sword is a two-handed. Read story! This is a story of a long, long... Of a time long, long ago. There once was a beautiful bird with resplendent feathers that lived a quiet life deep in the forest. Oh, I remember that story. Okay, so this is... Attack power 400, but magic power 30%. No, thank you. Hi, pigeons. To whom does the true voice speak? To whom does the true voice That's a dope sword. Choice. It is, but it's, I don't like the magic you must power. Answer. I need strong magic. It can talk! I ask, why did humans disappear from the world? Why did? What? Why do you mean disappear from the world? We're still here. The hell is this? I believe this is some manner of first. Oh yes, depressing weapon stories. I love their weapon stories. Also, hello, Malice. How you doing? Thanks for joining. Password? Yes. The correct answer should grant like, us access to the I don't password. think there's been one happy weapon story ever. I'm confident I've heard this somewhere before. They're all messed up and sad. To whom does the true voice speak? To whom does the true form show itself? I ask, why did humans disappear from the world? You must answer. Because of a black disease. I answer, because of a black disease. I ask, how can humans extend their lives? Uh, by separating body from soul. I answer by separating But body how do you soul. do that? I ask what Well is should the tools of death have happy stories connected to them? Exactly. That's why I'm just like, yo Kataro, I love you. So messed up. Um They are placed in their corresponding shells, no? I answer they are placed in their corresponding shells. Very well. You are acknowledged as master. You may enter. But it's like, how are you supposed to know what the answers are? Like, did they Seems ever the mention it happened. in the game? Because the black disease, yeah, that's apparent because Yona has the black disease. She has the black scrawl. But the other two, it's like, how would you have ever known that? <gasps> no! Oh! Oh! I f oh, I forgot this is right now. It's the twins from your village. Oh, Devila Popola. Popola? Devila? What are you doing here? Hey, any chance you'll just go back to the village? This is a very dangerous place. Even if you can find Yona here, you probably can't get her out. Popola, you led me here. How did you get here? I don't think there are any hints to that extremely major plot point. I like it. Oh, maybe that's the point, we because you're just like, what the hell am I supposed right to answer? And then you're just like, wait, what? What the hell does this mean? Hmm. Um, <laughs> let's go back to the village. Uh, what are you two doing here? What are you two doing here? I'm not going to answer that. You can figure it out yourself. We're here to rescue Yona. We're here to rescue Yona. No dice, huh? Well, I guess we don't have a choice then. No, I suppose not. How sad. Ah, uh, why? We didn't want to fight you. We really, really didn't want to. You don't have to! We can go Devil. in peace! What's happening? Sorry, but this fate was predetermined. Still, we spoke to truth. Uh! We really wanted to avoid this if possible. We were hoping to put it off for a hundred years or so. Until the next generation came along. What are you talking about? Are they shades? I don't think so. They're not shades, but... I don't believe it! Can you... Like, lock on, please? 
We never thought you'd grow to be this powerful. This is madness. Why do you block our path? You have no cause to speak so with us, Grimoire Vice. You are a traitor. What do you mean? Oh, I hate it when they do their teleporting jam. Of course we can. The proof came uh... from us in the first place. You were simply loaned a small portion of it. Vice, are you alright? No, damn it! Why are you guys doing I it? hate their teleporting! Why are you siding with the shades? So annoying. Whoa! Excuse me, Dark Hand, you're not allowed to use that. Ow! <laughs> Why? The answer to every riddle lies within the heart of the Shadow Lord. The Shadow Lord? So you've been on his side this whole time? I mean, everything was so conveniently placed for you. Yourself. You've got to face your own truth now. Please enter the Shadow Lord's castle. I definitely did not hit the time limit for this fight. Oh gosh. <laughs> Cuz they teleported so many freaking times. Ugh. Kane Shadow Lord Castle's map. Um Devil and Popola are fighting us. Yes, they do seem to be Meal, heal me. A great deal of <laughs> you okay, Vice? How odd. For long years, my mind and tongue have been my greatest asset. Heal me. Heal me. Heal me now. But now the latter seems to be... <laughs> Thank you. Well, Vice? Do not look at me like that. I am Grimoire Vice. I am Hopewood Wolf. <laughs> Heal me again, Emil! Hey, Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Vice got a stroke? I think I hear a waltz. Well, he did get fried by, um, the twins, so... Vice broke. Vice.exe has stopped working. This place looks so nice. Wow, they actually look like people. Whoa! Kurt, thank you so much for the 18 months. Cat attack. Ah. Also, happy Monday, dude. It certainly is a grand affair. They don't just look like blocky polygons. A bunch of dancing bastards. They're all shades. Whoa, shades. Here? No way. I think we're locked in. It's not like I was planning to leave. <laughs> you're the best. Yeah, no, you're really the cool. best, Kirby. You always sending me cute fur furry animal pics, man. Thank you. <laughs> oh, everyone's trying to kill me. Man, everyone here is a chonky boy. They're strong. Uh. Uh. Stop rolling into me like Gorons. <laughs> I am so sorry, dudes. You just wanted to enjoy a nice little dance in your ballroom. And I'm just like, nope, sorry, gotta kill you all. Oh, 
was fun. Nice. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. Oh wait, did these items disappear? Oh no, I didn't pick them up. Whoopsies. See, if they don't roll into you, they're not that big of a deal. Ooh! Haha, <laughs> cat. Cats! I'm a kitty cat. And a dunce, 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 and a dunce, dunce, dunce. Cats! I'm a kitty cat. A meow, 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 and a meow, meow, meow. Whoa! When did you appear? Hello. No blood balls, please. Block up. Oh, a rare drop. Hi, pretty choker. Ooh, so interesting how these shades are dropping such human like items. Whoa, oh, you're vulnerable now. Level up. Ah, oh, damn it. Ulfa, armor break 30%. Cool. I'm still getting experience rate, 30%. Oh. I'll open the next door. Cover me. oh, maybe on my um, s uh, ending B route, I'll put on the EXP plus. <laughs> I'll put on the EXP rate thing so I can level up faster so that I can kill the bosses quickly. So I can get all the time trophies. Where are you coming from? All the dancers are gone! Kainen, hurry! It's not open yet? Do I look like a goddamn locksmith to you? How'd you get here? No, I'm a locksmith. And I'm a locksmith. Lock doesn't want to open? Fine. Metal piercing? Ooh. Stop, you Help, sad. Damn no good bullshit bastard! Open the fuck up already! Hee oh. <laughs> Got it. Kainen! Look out! Stab. <laughs> oh no! It's the babies! Huh? Yeah. <laughs> they look like the machine heads. <laughs> kind of got trampled by babies! These things are freaking me out! Oh, why are they freaking out? They just babies. Okay, I'm gonna use a health staff. Pick that one up. Wait, I didn't use the health back? Oh, whoops! We need to help no, we need to get rid of these babies. Because they're shooting blood balls. Wait, what am I doing? We need to help I have... I have dark blasts. There we go. Do I really? Okay. Oh, there we go. You okay? Yeah. Well, we got problems. Where'd all you come from? Aww. Huh? Is the boar? Oh wait, now I could do my uh, hundred combo trophy. Just don't use magic. Oh, ah! no need forgiveness, asshole. Uh, never mind, I'm not gonna get the 100 hit combo thing. Yeah, I'm too strong. I'm gonna kill him. Uh. Oh, if I had a weaker weapon, I guess I could get the 100 combo. Yeah, I'm just gonna kill you. Whoa. I jumped. Stupid. I'm so stupid. I should have gone for the time trophy. Oh dear. Oh no wait, there's another one. Oh I 
did! Nice! Jump. Get down! Get down! Can we even hit this thing? Ah, oh, he's shooting out poison poop. Oh no! We can't stop now. Can't stop, Damn won't it. stop, don't drop the beat. Stay focused, Kaine. Don't fall victim to such distractions. Come on, we have to keep going. Let's go. I'm going, I'm going. Uh. Am I even getting poisoned? I can't tell. This way, move. Oh, whoop. I guess we're going. Oh, that's how I could have gotten the, um, the trophy, because he just keeps- LAST WEAPON, I think. Dragoon Lance, yes! Okay, so I got, um, sorry, me too. Got the Phoenix Sword and the Dragoon Lance, and everything else is in my second playthrough. Awesome. Got all the weapons. Ah, uh, Dragoon Lance. Read story. He has grown old. The king's dauntless gaze has lost its light, and his stalwart body has grown soft. What's more, every ounce of fear and vanity he had gained with age now gnawed away at his heart. The king was afraid, so he repeatedly ordered the invasion of neighboring countries so as to hold on to lands he had been sworn to protect. The king was afraid, so he tried to take everything through violence and oppression, for he no longer trusted his own advisors and vassals. Wait, um, what was the stats of that? Uh, 30% magic? Nope. I like I'm my here. strong magic. Medicinal herb? Oh wait, I can't pick it up. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay, I'll use medicinal herb. Damn it, I use a recovery potion. How can we deal with this? Ah! 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 Please hurry! Ah! Wait, what am I doing? Just magic blast them out of the way. Dummy! Oh, uh, but I'm so slow. Hey, how'd you catch up with me? Kick, 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 kick. Damn it, I can't get it open. It's a metal door, kinda. Woohoo! Yeah, spray me with your poison poop. Ow. <laughs> oh, ow. Excuse you. The entrance is locked too. It seems we are in a bit of a predicament. We're in a bit of a pickle. Yeah, get up. Oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. He keeps regenerating. I'm surprised this one gave you so much trouble. He didn't, actually. I was killing him pretty quickly. Let our friends through! The people of the mask owe you a great debt! And now it is time to repay it! Ha! They can stand to loosen up a bit, huh? What are you doing here? Jump! This is the sh castle of the Shadow Lord, is it not? You are correct. And we have a common enemy. 
We'll hold this one off. Please keep moving. We are the people of the vast. We will stand our ground until our last breath. I swore to upon Fira's grave. I swore to become a good and just ruler. A king who would protect others from the shades. Getting in free hits for my combo. It's open. Now go, rescue the one you hold most dear. Let me just see if I can get the 100 combo. So close, so close, so close. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 80. Oh, so close, so close, so close! Let's go! Oh. Woo! Damn! Broke me get! Okay, bye. Hey! Stop! Let me go! Stop it! Damn it! King, no! We'll meet again, you and I, once all of this is over. Until then! Open the door! You can't fight that thing on your own! It's alright! You have to keep going! Defeat the Shadow Lord and get your sister back! You must once again know the joy of having one you love by your side. He cares about me, even though he lost his own life. Now then... How many rules are there about what to shout before dying in battle? 88, my liege! Amazing! How do you remember all these things? Do not despair, my liege. We are with you. I know. Let's try this again. By the honor of the mask. For the honor of a king. For the honor of a queen. Open the damn door! Slap. <laughs> Knock it off already. Let's go. Kaine. He's fighting for you. And for Fira. And let him die for nothing. We have bigger fish to fry. My friend. A meal song. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Elf sad. I'll have recovery potion. There we go. Wow, tons of health salves here. Strength capsule, noise. Let's go. Round two. The somber music. I know, Emil's theme is so sad. Yep, round two, let's go. We made it, guys. <laughs> oh, I think this is the one where we get the time. Devil. Popola. Oh, look. You made it. We've been waiting for so long. Oh no, they're hot. <laughs> Why are you doing this? It began 1300 years ago. Humanity, finding itself on the brink of extinction, undertook a last ditch rescue plan called Project Gestalt. Gestalt? Do you still not remember, Grimoire Vice? Then let's give you a refresher. <laughs> Oh, damn! Obtain Project Gestalt documents. Vice! My... My... I love what they did with the audio. I remember... Devola... Opala... You are not human. They're not human. The story of this game is like a more depressing Gurren Lagan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes the truth can be a real bitch. You want to finish that thought for him, sister? Devil Popola, why are you guys so mean now? All of us. 
every person standing in this room are mere shells created by the true humans. What do you mean? What are you saying? I'm not a human! You still don't get it? You aren't human. So then humans, I mean the true humans, are extinct? No, they still live on. You know them as shades. Bum, bum, bum. Each shade is a twisted remnant of what was once a human being. Crazy, huh? That's now, why the they you all bleed and just get down when you cut them. Wait. Wait. Sorry, but we're going to be needing that shell of yours. The rightful owner has been waiting for a very long time. Please don't be angry with us. We are only doing our duty. Our endless existences have a single purpose. To control the lives of others in accordance with the will of the true humans. And now, all of a sudden, the password makes sense. That you have to separate the souls you from the body motives, to have humans continue desires. to live on. And because of the black ours. disease. I fear it really is just that simple. Don't speak such foolish mess. <sighs> She's so pretty. They're so pretty. Oh my gosh. You guys are so pretty. Wait, uh, Star Castle. You and us, we're the same. Tools in the hands of a master. No. I'm nothing like you. Ugh. Where you at? Ah, the stupid dark hands, and now she's gonna teleport. Yeah. Ah! Sorry, Devola. But how can you be hurt? You're an android. <laughs> Popola, are you crying? No. How can Don't you cry? Die. You're an android. You know, Popola, I understand now why we're twins. It's because. because we were born without souls. Devla, I can't stop How are you bleeding? bleeding? You're an oh, android. I can't stop it. This world is too... Uh, too lonely for one without a soul. There's too much emptiness. Our souls are missing. And yet somehow... <laughs> Emotion chip, I guess. It's kind of weird. But still, how would that form tears? Sorry, sis. Devil. Devil. Don't you go. No. No, I can't be alone. Devil. Yeah, when I first played this, I was so confused because I was like... For most of the game, you spent your time apart. Like, Popola was always the one in the library. Devil was in the bar or in the fountain. But now she's just like, I can't be alone! It's like, but you weren't really together in, in the town. <laughs> stop? Now you want to stop? It's like, yeah, I talked... Like, I talked to Devola when you I needed to do quests, sister. but most of the time it was just Popola. Now you want to stop? I, I was confused. It have to... No one stops. <laughs> it's way too late to stop. No one stops. Please, don't do this, Popola. You and Devil were like parents to me. Those two have watched the world wither for time immemorial. Immemorial. Cool. Oh, I'm gonna die. I 
don't want to do this. But you gotta. I don't want to fight her. You gotta. Stop bitching and start fighting. It's the only way. Uh. Oh. Oh. Can you pop up right there again? Just fucking crack. Hate their teleporting. No stopping. No stopping ever. Oh, damn. The bridge blast. I've got an idea. Good job, Emil. Oh. I fear we're done. Hopefully, for. you can't do this to me. I'm the original body. It'll you can't do right. this to me. You're not allowed to destroy me. You know, when I was young, I, I hated my eyes. And now that I'm older, I hate what my body has become. But there's something else there now. Something like pride, you know? I mean, without all this, I couldn't have become your friend. Goodbye, my friends. Thank you for everything. Emil, no! Emil. For so long, all I could do was destroy. But now, I have a chance to save something. No! Now get going, okay? Emil. Don't worry about me. My boy! I'm gonna be fine. My boy! Emil! Emil! <gasps> Oh, Popola, I'm sorry you went crazy, but... Oh, dear. Uh, oh, dear. Kaine's so unstable, and Vice can't stop arguing with people. I hope they can hold it together once I'm gone. Well, I guess they'll just have to learn. My boy! Love you. I want to see you again. I want to see all of you again. Just one more time. <laughs> I'm scared. I don't want to die. Ah, oh, my boy! The bone boy shall go flaccid. Ah! Oh, <laughs> GG, Popola. Lo siento. And the meal's gone. Fan freaking tastic. Yeah, first time I played this, I was just like, no way, no way, what? At first, I was so confused at what Devil and Popola were saying. I was like, what are you talking about? What you're saying makes no sense at all. Oh, Yona. <laughs> I love my Emil head emote. And he's blushing too. 
Whoa, doesn't he look a little like someone we know? Both so sad. Let's go. Yeah. It's like, kind of, why the heck did you have to kick and punch him? She said. Well, I have no Emil to heal me, so I should heal before I go in. Whoa! Why? Why? Children, why? One last hurrah before I go in. You guys give me a chance to level up. <laughs> or get some healing items. It's great. Big guys. Lovely. A lot more annoying to do now that I don't have a meal, but you know, I'll do it. I'm trucking along. I didn't get the time for the androids. Ugh. Oh well. Next time. I could skip all the cutscenes. Level up! Wait, wait, I'm only 29? I thought I was at least 30. Oh no, I wanted to level up to 30 before I came in here. But that did not happen. Come on. Yep, I knew it. Woohoo! Whoa, okay. She took care of the small fries pretty quick. Now you know those are real human kids. Yep. Now you know. Because shades are the real humans. So all the small ones, the round ones, are babies. Toddlers. And then, like, the small ones are kids. That's why they were carrying around old school books and coloring books. Because they're children! <laughs> And then the bigger ones are the adults, and that's why they're smarter and they armored themselves up. Because they're adults! Ah, so good! You've been killing humans the whole game! You are a murderer! Hello, Shadow Lord. He's waited 1300, 1400 years. Yeah. This ends here. Strike hard. Oh, nothing. Uh. So, if shades are the real humans, that means I've never been a real human. Stand against the shadow. Such a man of fool. I am nothing like you. 
That's them kids. No, they're just innocent children, babies. You were the bad guy all along. Exactly. I was the menace. I was the terror. The thing is, they needed me to go around adventuring, getting all the lost fragments, getting vice, like, um... Getting- learning all the words and all that. And then eventually, I would have- uh, vice would have to merge with noir. And then they would have enough knowledge and, like, whatever they needed to, um... To, uh merge the souls back together with the shade bodies. But I'm rooting for that! <laughs> I was not supposed to fight back. <laughs> you know, they could all work together. But the... The thing is, if even if they all work together, the replicants, what looks to us like humans, would have to disappear because we would have to rejoin the original body. So someone would technically die. Because look, we developed our own personality. Like, we're fighting against the system to be like, no, I'm going to do what I want to do. You can't stop me. And that wasn't supposed to be the plan. <gasps> she didn't come to me. <gasps> She's going to the Shadow Lord. Please, just, just stop. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't need someone else's body. I don't want it. There's another girl inside this body. I can hear See, her. they develop different personalities from their original soul. She won't stop crying. She says she wants to see her brother. Yona's been possessed? This girl loves her brother too. Yona grew up to be so pretty. It's not right, you know? It's not right that she can't see him. It's you, isn't it? Don't drop your sword. If she stands in the sunlight, the shade will disappear. So right now, original Yona just killed herself. The shade that possessed her is gone. Sadness. 
think I'm gonna sympathize with you? I swore to protect my son. Sister and my friends. If someone puts them in danger, they must stand aside or be cut down. Now come on! Let's finish this! What do you think I'm trying to do, Vice? I had to charge up my magic more. I love the song, Shadow Lord. Oh. Oh no! Oh no! No, bother. One moment, please. Are you okay? Fine, just fine. All right, no. I don't think I can use magic now. Vice. It seems some headstrong idiot has decided to push me beyond my limits. <laughs> hop, hop. I should have taken that job as a cookbook when I had the chance. Nice joke. You couldn't. Yes. You were in a lab. Sorry. Sorry. Only joking. I hate cookbooks. <laughs> but let's go out of the way. I have one final task to fulfill. Where are you going? Why, it's a stopping, of course. But after that, it's up to you. Only you can see this battle to its conclusion. I wish you luck, my friend. I'm just losing people left and right. I I'd always fight by your side. You are an exceedingly stubborn lad. You know that, yes? Perhaps that's why I've so enjoyed our time together. But I fear this is where our journey ends. Vice! Oh, and remember what I told you about using my full name. Well, forget it. I've grown rather fond of Vice. Everyone's Vice. pretty in the sunlight, damn. I knew you'd come around. Don't let it go to your head now. Damn it, no magic for me. <laughs> Rumor of Weiss has lost all his powers! Dodge the balls! Oh man, this music box, Shadow Lord. Oh gosh, this is sad. I forgot to read the Gestalt files! After I got them, ah, shoot! Second playthrough, I'll read it. Everyone needs their hero moment, and now humanity is dead! A world in flux. I beat the game. Is he on alright? Oh, God, no. Oh, please, the girl is fine. Vice! Vice? Where are you? Are you okay? I am as well as can be, considering I have lost my physical form. Doubtless my voice will be the next to go, so listen closely. Your sister is safe. Do not mourn her. 
and do not give up hope. Instead, you must call her back to you. How? Use your memories. Recall the times you spent with her. Present her with proof that the two of you live still, and that your lives have meaning. Here's a cookie! I... I don't know. Typical. But take heart. I don't know how to reach out to my own sister! What's my favorite food? Cookies. What's my favorite book? That's my magic storybook. What's my favorite place? Anywhere you are. Home with you. What's my favorite flower? The lunar tear, of course. Is she really his sister? Yes. Okay, one more question. Who do I love more than anyone? Why me, of course. Give her a s What is a smensel? Is that you? Yona. Sad <laughs> than before like you've grown up oh yeah i guess you haven't seen me for a while have i been asleep this whole time you know how does that huge ribbon stay up on your dress something like that <laughs> it's almost like i'm a princess from some fairy tale you're yona i'm so happy to have you back me too Kaine. You and your sister. Have a good life, okay? Where are you gonna go? Guess I'll... You could stay with us, you know. Thanks, but I'll pass. You know how it is. I got my own shit to take care of. What do you mean? Personal shit, alright? Anyway... Take it easy, yeah? Kind of. Hey, look. You don't know what a smell is? The greatest pencil ever. They smell like anything? No, I never heard of it. Androids that grow and cry. For the longest time, I heard someone telling me how they wanted to see the light. And now, they can finally see. Nope, she's dead. She's gone. She disintegrated in the sunlight. She wanted to see the light because she was a shade and shades will die in the light. <sighs> yeah, so the reason why I think all the Yorha androids all have um, white hair and blue eyes is because of how Nier and Yo Yona look. They have, um, they have white hair and light eyes. And because Project Gestalt was based off of Shadow Lord and Nier, I feel like that's why they made the androids look like them because it's like, well, you started off this project, you might as well, we might as well take your likeness for humanity's sake. Whoa, we're kids again. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot, I forgot to read the Project Gestalt documents after I got them. I'm so dumb. I probably won't have it when I start second playthrough. Oh, I'm so dumb. Or will I? It's so sunny today. Yeah, it sure is. I can't say my full thoughts on the ending yet because I have to do. <laughs> I have to do ending B first, and then I could be like blah 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 blah.
I kind of like said some stuff though, like, like um, oh hey, Shadow Lord is you, but looking at the way Yona clings to him and calls him brother, it's kind of obvious that Shadow Lord is me. So yeah, when I played this the first time, I was like, wait, what? That didn't really solve anything. I I have a lot more questions than I have answers. And then I played the second time, and I was like, <laughs> Now we gotta get ready for SMT Nocturne. Since I have the physical edition, it's going to be mailed to me tomorrow, but I still have to do um, ending C, D, B, C, D, E here, and I'm going to platinum this game before I move on to another game. So, yeah, other games won't be for a while. And it's gonna be real boring because, no, maybe I should do all, like, the fishing and the weapon grinding stuff off camera because that's just gonna be tons of grinding and walking back and forth. Okay, so after I get ending E, that's when I'll um, that's when I'll switch over to a different game again. E. Oh, whoa, English. I love this game. I love this game! Have, okay, Smooth, have a good night. Thanks for joining. Kira Buckland, question mark. <laughs> Wait, who did she do? Oh, I don't think she appeared yet. Kyle McCarley? Oh, I think that's gonna be Dadnir. Nier? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, when Nier first came out in the US, uh, we got Dad Nier. So right now we played as Brother Nier because it's Nier Replicant, but yeah, um, we had Dad Nier. So instead of being Yona's brother, we were her father. We were huge and jacked. But I'm glad I got to play a version with where it's um brother near. Time to get absolutely yoked. Yeah, I think we get to play as him in the uh, World of Nightmares, which was originally DLC, but they added it to the main game here. And that's where I'll get three more weapons to complete my weapon collection so that I can do the ending C, B, E. Whoa, Shotaro Morikubo? What voice did he do? He didn't show up yet? Who did you do? I... Who did you do? Yeah, I think when I do my 15 hour run, my speed run, I'm going to play it in Japanese. But if I play it in Japanese, I'm gonna be skipping all the cutscenes so I won't be able to hear everyone's voice. <laughs> Spike Spencer? Spike Spencer. Yeah, who did he do? Cause like I saw his name and there was question marks. I was like, who who? I feel like the only characters we didn't see are Yoko Taro, creative director. Woo! Oh! The voices for the androids! I think? No, I only get the outfits of the androids. 
I don't know. No! Yes. I don't know what I'm talking about. But then there would be... Three more voices. But I saw Yui Ishikawa's name and she did 2B. In Japanese. Haha! -ha, I got A! That's the clear data. Yeah. Ending B. Load your clear data after completing the game to experience kindness story. You can now read a departed mother's diary in your house. Wardrobe has been added to the options menu. New outfits can be attained by progressing through a departed member's mother's diary. Change music has been added to the game settings section of the options menu. Saving. Yay! Okay, nothing changed on the load screen. And it should pop me in right... Right at... Yep! Whenever I interacted with Kaini, I was reminded about something from my past. Maybe my mind has been confusing her with my sister this whole time. Anyway. Yeah, so second playthrough isn't like a full playthrough, it just starts off from the time skip. <sighs> And I think a lot of people would be like, I saw this cutscene, skip it. But no, ending B is where you do not skip the cutscenes. <laughs> because you know now, kind of dreams, discrimination. Because you know now that the shades are the real humans. So battles with them are going to be slightly different. Spike Spencer, aka Shinji. Shinji from Evangelion? The sound of rain filled the village. The steep cliffs that surrounded the area magnified sound, causing even the slightest drizzle to rattle like a thunderstorm. Thin wisps of smoke streamed from the huts as the villagers huddled in their homes and waited at the rain. A single child, however, had braved the downpour and was now wandering slowly toward the wooden hawk-shaped weather vane at the center of town. The wanderer reached the vane, which had existed for as long as anyone could remember, and stared. The child's face was simultaneously delicate and fierce, like a teacup that had survived a shipwreck. Those traits combined with pale white skin to give the face an almost sexless quality. If the beak turns east, I go home. If it stays west, then I... The child blinked. Rain slowly dripped down the young one's short hair and began its long descent to the ground. Come on. Come on! The child felt a slight breeze and watched as the vane slowly creaked to life. Spinning this way and that for a moment, it finally settled with the beak pointing firmly toward the east. East? Really? Before the vein could move again, a jagged rock came spinning and tumbling through the air, striking home against the child's head. The force of the blow dropped the child to the ground as a ha hail of stones began to fall all around. Oh no, they found me. A heartbreaking smile crept across the child's face as the stones continued their assault. Through the rain, the sound of multiple footsteps grew louder before a voice rang out. Yo-ho, kind of! The voice belonged to Demo, the worst of all the bullies in the area. As Kaine struggled to stand, a final stone came skittering through the mud and bounced against her foot. Blood oozed from a cut above her eye and blurred her vision, but she could make out the shapes of Demo and his usual gang of idiots. The boy seemed taken aback for a moment by Kaine's seeming indifference to the blood dripping from her face, but quickly regained his bravado. What's up, freak? You like the rain? You like getting all wet? Or did you finally decide to run away from home? Though she knew it was futile, Kaine turned to leave. Before she could get more than a few steps, the other children scrambled to surround her, cruelty burning in their eyes. Kaine knew those were not the only eyes on her. The tormentor's parents watched from the safety of their homes. She was attuned to this sensation. It was one she had experienced many times before. While some villagers simply turned a blind eye to the actions of their children, many encouraged it openly. In a society ruled by superstition and fear, Kaine was something to be hated and, if possible, destroyed. I didn't say you could leave, freak. Demo's words chewed at her like a worm through an apple. He can't hurt me, she lied to herself. Be strong. Be brave. He can't hurt me. He can't hurt me. He can't hurt... Oh, look! The little freak's gonna cry. What's wrong? Be sad that everyone hates you and wants you dead. Kinda prayed for the rain to flood down and carry her away from a world that seemed to have no place for her. But if there were gods, they chose to ignore her. As Demo crept ever closer, the clouds began to thin and the rain slowed. Even the weather hates me. I'm useless. A failure. I wish Demo's rock had taken my head off. Kaina couldn't meet Demo's leering gaze. She lowered her eyes and stared at the muddy ground below. 
The bully moved forward until he was inches away. She could smell the scent of old meat on his breath. The boy grabbed Kaina's face with thick fingers and yanked it upward. She tried to run away, but he forced her gaze back and jammed his thumb against her eyelid to pry it open. Show me. No. Did you just say no? Timo grinned evilly. You don't say no to me. No one says no to me. Not even taking his attention from Kaina, he called out to his cohorts. Come on, guys, let's give the freak what she deserves. As soon as Demo finished, kicks and blows began to rain down upon Kaina. Demo paused, still grinning, as Kaina curled into a ball and tried to make the pain stop. I don't get you, freak. What you acting like a girl for, huh? Everyone knows what you really are. Kaina ignored the question, choosing instead to stare at the weather vane. It continued to point east as the supremely confident about the future that chosen for her. Go home? Yeah, that's a funny joke for someone with dead parents and no home to go to. Freak! chanted the children. Freak! 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 Kaina closed her eyes and listened to the rain, waiting for the pain to start again. As the clutching hands of the ch village children closed around her, she bent her mind to the sound of the rain, letting it become her world entire. The rain fell, but the pain never came. Only when the laughter of her tormentors turned into terrified cries did she dare open a single blood-caked eye. Kaina was shocked to see Demo sprawl on the ground, holding his head and screaming in pain. She could see blood welling from spaces between his fat, twisted fingers. Oh my god, he's crying. He's actually crying. Deprived of their leader, the other children glanced back and forth between themselves, as if waiting for someone to step forward and take charge. When no savior emerged, they began an uneasy shuffle away from Kaina. But the young girl was the least of their concerns. Instead, their attention was wrapped on the ancient woman standing a few feet away. After struggling for a breath for a moment, she finally spoke in a thick voice thick with rage. Hurts like a biatch, don't it? Now I suggest you scatter before I throw another one. And if any of you little bastards ever touch my Kaine again, I'll do far worse than throw a rock. You can count on it. The old woman crouched down and gently touched the hand Demo was using to cover the wound. Before he could think to protest, she ground her palm into the wound and twisted back and forth. Oh, he screamed, le leaping to his feet. Stop it! What are you doing? Quit whining. Ain't no one ever died from a scratch. You hit me with a rock, you stupid... Biatch! A big one! That thing could've killed me! The old woman shrugged. Death is the best cure for stupid. Demo's face twisted with rage at her words. Locking his eyes on Kaina, he took a step backward and spat on the ground. Get out! Leave this village! No one wants you here! Either of you! Seeing the old woman grab another stone, Demo and his companions turned tail and ran. As they fled, the old woman grabbed her side and barked at a single laugh. Ha! Look at the fat boy go! Guess he's healthy enough to run from a fight. The woman's smile faded as she turned her attention to Kaina. Kneeling down, she removed her shawl and placed it on around the young girl's shoulders, then produced a cloth from the folds of her dress and began blotting at the blood on her forehead. Oh, Kaina, she said. Why didn't you fight back? You're stronger than that lot. The words of her grandmother stung Kaina, and she turned away. Don't be nice to me, she said. I don't deserve it. Nothing, nothing matters anymore. Her tears, held in check for so long, finally began to fall on the muddy ground below. Everyone hates me. They think I cause bad things to happen. They think I'm a freak. I wish I was dead. As Kaina's tears turned to sobs, she felt her grandmother's hands on her shoulders. Despite her advanced age and diminutive size, she was a woman of surprising strength, and Kaina found herself unable to turn away. Don't talk like that, girl. It's a river wide and deep that flows between the realms of this world and the next, and it grants no mercy to any that attempt to cross me. You got a duty to fight until your last breath. Understand? The old woman tightened her grip and tried to still the tremor in her voice. You know the pain of losing someone close to you, Kaina. You know because you survived it. As the words hit home, Kaina was struck by the force of her love for the old woman. As a young child, she didn't even know of her grandmother, but when her parents died, the woman quickly accepted her as her own. Grandma, as Kaina called her, was cunning, vulgar, and quick to violence, and their first few years together had not been easy. But with each year that passed, Kaina and her grandmother had grown closer. However, it was only now, sitting in the mud with tears and blood caking her face, that Kaina truly understood the depths of her affection. Here was a woman who had seen hard times, who had seen death, who had fought through all these things and somehow emerged on the other side. If anyone could understand Kaina's pain and loneliness, it was her. Do I make you sick, Grandma? Of course not. Don't be an arse. <laughs> Kaina drew her grandmother's mothy and shawl around her body and shuddered. But my body, it's not normal. If I was normal, then Mom and Dad wouldn't- Hush, interrupted Grandma. I'll not hear another word of this nonsense. You're my granddaughter, and I love you, and if folks have a problem with that, they can just go to hell. With that, the old woman reached out and placed a wreath of dried flowers in Kaina's hair. The skill it took to bend the flowers without breaking the stems or losing a single petal was remarkable, and the beauty of it made Kaina want to cry all over again. Oh my gosh, these are lunar tears! Grandma, you made this for me? 
Lunar tears were legendary flowers. Most people could live their entire lives without ever seeing one. I saw four. And yet her grandmother had somehow collected a dozen or more. Hannah reached up and touched a wreath as if she couldn't believe it was real. Where, where did you find these? Just stumbled on them while I was doing shopping. The old woman turned away as she spoke, lead leading Kaina to suspect that the search had been more difficult than she was letting on. The pain she took to construct the ornament, let alone track down the flowers used in its construction, made Kaina's heart hurt. She reached up and gently adjusted the wreath, admiring the way it felt between her fingers. Didn't quite turn out right, as her said her grandmother as she squinted at it. These old hands have trouble with delicate work, but it sure looks good on a pretty girl like you. Kaina blushed and turned away. Do you, you think I'm pretty? Of course you are. What a fool thing to say. Thank you, Grandma. Her grandmother smiled. We're gonna be fine, you and me, she said. As long as we got each other, we'll be just fine. Kaina took her grandmother's hand in hers, and the two of them struggled to their feet. As they began the long walk home, Kaina gripped the hand with all her might as if trying to stop smoke from drifting away on the wind. The rain had stopped. Kaina stood beneath the weather vane, watching it spin in lazy circles, no longer caring about the direction it faced when it stopped. I don't need to escape. I have a home now. Grandma loves me, and that's enough, even if it's us against the world. Hannah let her gaze drift up past the vein and into the cloudy sky. The last faint hints of a rainbow were slowly fading. As she turned and headed for home, the light scattered into a million particles and vanished, seemingly taken away on the breeze. Kaine's dreams, daily life. Oh my gosh, this is just gonna be... Novel after novel? Oh gosh, it is. In the distance, Kaina heard the steady sounds of an axe striking wood. The noise had purposeful quality to it, as if she was hearing a master woodsman go about his work. The firewood being produced, however, was as far from a work of art as could be. Pieces of every shape and size were being flung around a barren yard with a wild abandon. Anyone trying to stack such wood would probably die of frustration before the job was through. Stupid piece of shite axe! <laughs> Kaina's grandmother flailed away with the axe, filling the air with both splinters of wood and wood that would make the most hardened sailor blush. Grandma, called Kaina. That you, Kaina? yelled the old woman, taking her eyes off the wood for a moment. Don't get too close or I might take your garn foot off by mistake. <laughs> she brought the axe down on a piece of wood, sending chips flying in every direction. One spun past Kaina close enough for her to hear the whistle, at which point she decided to step back. Once she'd scuttled to a safe distance, she cupped her hands around her mouth and shouted, Grandma! Do you need help? I can get you water or lunch or a new axe or something? The axe, poised to strike another wobbly blow, paused in midair. The old woman considered her granddaughter's offer for a moment and then smiled. Tell you what, since I'm doing such a piss-poor job of chopping, why don't you come here and take over so I can go get the water? Shades have been restless lately, and I don't want you running into one of them bastards. Relinquishing the axe, her grandmother picked up a long pole with wooden buckets on either end. Gathering water was by far the most difficult, uh, more difficult of the two jobs, but kind of knew better than to complain. Once grandma's mind was set, there was no changing it. Kaina did her best to help with chores, but Grandma took every task that required travel to the village. Though she had a long list of possible excuses, Kaina knew the real reason. She didn't want her granddaughter to be taunted and harassed by the villagers. Once Kaina moved in, Grandma decided to take up residence a good distance from the Eyrie. Out of sight, out of mind seemed the best po to be the best policy when it came to villagers and her granddaughter, and rare were the days when any but the two of them could be found on the rocky acre of land they called home. Home. Kaina enjoyed the solitude, but harbored a secret resentment that her grandmother was forced to spend her golden years in such a place. After watching her grandmother leave, Kaina turned her attention to the task at hand. She had never chopped wood before in her life, and soon discovered why the old woman hated the chore. Swing after swing of the axe produced only a tiny crack in the wood, and when she finally managed to connect with the solid stroke, the tool embedded itself in the log and refused to budge. Frustrated, Kaina swung the axe around her head and threw it, log and all, across the yard. Damn it! Damn it! <sighs> Crap! She suddenly understood the joy her grandmother felt in a good curse. Happier now, she picked up the axe, forced it from the wood, and resumed chopping. She had a natural skill with a blade, but the task was challenging, and blisters soon began to form in her small pink hands. This is tough. And my logs are all weird sizes. Spitting on her palms and ignoring the pain, Kaina redoubled her efforts. Just as she was developing a rhythm, Grandma returned from the village. Settling, setting down her buckets with a small size, she took one look at the logs and coughed out a wheezy laugh. Pretty clumsy, girl. You better practice if... If you... Her grandmother so suddenly collapsed to her knees, causing one of the buckets to wobble precariously. Eyes wide, Kaina dropped the axe and ran to her grandmother's side. Grandma! The old woman shook her head and pointed a trembling figure at the bucket. Get the bucket. Can't let it spill. Kaina steadied the bucket with a foot as she knelt by her grandmother. A small bit of water sloshed over the side and made a new home in the hem of her dress, but Kaina didn't notice. Grandma? Grandma, what's happening? 
Crazed with panic, she grabbed her grandmother by the shoulders and shook. After a moment, the woman lifted her arms and batted Kaina away. Stop that. Just stop, she cried, breathing heavily. It ain't like I'm dying. I'm just tired from the trip is all. Kaina desperately wanted to believe her, but one look at the old woman's shaking hands and warm face told her more than words ever could. Her grandmother had lived a long, hard life, and it seemed the bill was finally coming due. The time when her grandmother watched over Kaina was ending. Sooner than either of them had feared, the positions would be reversed. The next morning, Kaina came to the side of her grandmother's bed and took her wrinkled hand. Grandma, you're sick and you need medicine. I'm going to the village. The old woman shook her head and tried to rise, but Kaina gently pushed her down. It's all right, she said. I'll be fine. Her grandmother fixed her with a gaze that could melt steel. After what seemed an eternity, she finally lowered her eyes and sighed. Well, I don't like it, Goramit. But I guess I should quit being so stubborn and let you grow up. The old woman watched as Kaina strapped on her boots and made her way down the road to the village. Hours later, as an unseen sun made its way across the dark and rainy sky, she was still watching. Kaina moved at a brisk pace, checking her pockets every few minutes to make sure the money her grandmother gave her was still there. Every noise caused her to spin on her heels, making sure she wasn't being stalked by a shade, or worse, Demo and his gang. But she encountered neither tormentors nor shades, as, and Kaina find herself uh, at the entrance to the village. A few adults she could see glanced sideways at her, then muttered to each other behind raised hands before slinking away into the shadows. Her heart racing, Kaina took a series of rapid shallow breaths and tried to calm herself. I have to prove myself. I have to help Grandma. I have to be strong. She chanted those words to herself over and over as she slowly made her way. Finally, her eyes settled on a rotund older woman who was angrily waving her arms in the air and telling anyone who would listen exactly what she thought of Kaina's presence. Hey, lady, said Kaina with bravado she did not feel. Where's the apothecary? The woman's flabby cheeks shook in bewildered anger. How dare this... Things speak to me, they seem to say. But Kaina saw that her eyes held a different emotion. Fear. Yeah, we're both scared, lady. Trust me on this one. Which way, Kaina repeated. The woman pointed at a small building to her right before hitching up her dress and stumbling off in the other direction. Kaina cringed, expecting a stone to come flying from the assembled crowd, but none came. Her mind was filled with a strange sense of pride as she made her way to the apothecary, but the new emotion had little time to take root, for as soon as she opened the door, she noticed a familiar customer at the counter. It was Demo. He'd clearly been sent here on some kind of family errand because of because his gang of followers was nowhere to be found. Oh my god, he sputtered. I mean, uh, what are you doing here, freak? The insult was delivered without force, and Kaine happily ignored it. Stretching on tiptoes to see over the counter, she asked the shopkeeper for the medication. Ha! barked Demo. That old biatch finally keel over. Go to hell, Demo. The boy's eyes grew so wide they seemed re ready to fall out of his head, but before he could let fly a comeback, or worse, a punch, the apothecary told them to knock it off before he kicked them out of the store. Demo slunk out of the shop, cursing Kaine under his breath. Once he was gone, she allowed herself to breathe once more, taking a brief tour of the shop while the owner prepared her medication. Countless tiny bottles filled the cramped store, each with a label written in some indecipherable language. An ocean of aromas assaulted her nose, creating a scent that was exotic, but not altogether unpleasant. Seeing such a variety of supplies gave Kaine a sense of peace. Surely, in a world so vast, there would be a place she could call home. On the far wall behind the counter rested a portrait of a stunning young girl. The picture had once contained a bright, vibrant colors, but time had worked its cruel magic, and they were beginning to fade. The beauty of the work, however, remained undiminished. You like that picture? Kaina turned to find the apothecary with a small vial of medicine in his hand. His eyes were gentle but sad, and they seemed to stare through her and into nothing as he spoke. That's my daughter. I sketched her when she was just a, nor just a little girl. She's been dead a long time now. Kaina didn't know how to respond. She just stared at the portrait and tried to come up with the right words. Pictures are wonderful things, continued the shopkeeper. They let the ones closest to you live on forever. He shook his head slightly, then looked down at Kaina and smiled. Handing her the medicine, he reached into his sizable green apron and produced a handful of old wax crayons. You should have these. There's no one left that I wish to draw. Kaina took an instinctive step back, causing the shopkeeper's face to darken. Yes, I've heard the rumors about you, he said. It's a small village, and word travels quickly. Between you and me, I'm not sure which of them to believe, but I also don't think they matter much. I know your grandmother, Kali, and I think the way she was driven out of this town is just deplorable. Grandma's name is Kali? thought Kaina suddenly. She was still mulling over this new fact over in her mind as she reached out and gently took the crayons from the apothecary's hands. Your grandmother is an old friend of mine, he said as Kaina scooted away yet again, and I owe her much. I wager she would like it if you drew a picture of her. Yes, I think she would like that very much. Kaina murmured a quiet agreement, but inside her heart was bursting. Never before had a villager treated her with anything but complete contempt. It was a tiny, almost imperceptible step, but it was a step nonetheless, and with enough tiny steps, she might one day discover the rest of the world. 
When Kaina returned home, she found her grandmother asleep in her bed. Her feet were blackened and raw, even bleeding in a bit in places, leading Kaina to think that she had been pacing around the room until exhaustion finally caught up with her. She placed the medicine by her grandmother's pillow and turned to leave, but found the old woman's hand clasped around her arm. Back already, are you? asked her grandmother with a yawn. Come here, let me have a look at you. Grandma sat up and examined Kaina from head to toe. Finally satisfied that nothing terrible had befallen her grandchild, she leaned back and allowed herself to relax. Well, how was it? Did those bastards give you any trouble? It was kind of fun, said Kaina with a small smile. No, seriously, it was. Fun, eh? Asked her grandmother in a voice which implied she believed anything but. Uh-huh. So anytime you need me to run an errand, just let me know. As she spoke, Kaina removed the crayons from her pocket. After a brief explanation of their source, she informed her grandmother that she was going to sketch her a portrait. A portrait of me? Ridiculous. No one wants to stare at a wrinkled old crone. But grandma, it'll make you live forever. Horse shite, said her grandmother, throwing back the sheet from her bed. Living forever would just piss me off. Now put those crayons away and help with dinner. But Kaina would not relent, and in the end, Grandma found herself leaning against the wall of their house as a posing for a master artist. Kaina took up the crayons, eyed her subject carefully, and set to work. Just as her grandmother was about to nod off, Kaina finished the piece. After staring at it for a bit, she released it from her grip and let it slowly drift to the floor. It's terrible. It doesn't look like you at all. I'm sorry, Grandma. I thought these crayons would, you know make drawing easy or something. The old woman's eyes narrowed at her granddaughter's disappointment. Let me be the judge of that, she said, ignoring the pain in her back and reaching for the paper. The sketch could have been a person's face. It also could have been a boulder, a lump of clay, or an incredibly misshapen loaf of bread, all rendered in a chaotic array of colors. I'm making mac and cheese. You want some? Yes, I would love some mac and cheese. I really want some cheese. The old woman stared at the picture for a long time, then slowly wheezed out a laugh. Oh, Kaina, she said between laughter, you truly are my blood. You're as clumsy as me, and I love it. But, hush, I won't hear any more bull about how ugly you think it is. It came from the heart, and I'll treasure it always. True to her word, the old woman gave the picture a place of honor above the kitchen table. In the days that followed, Kaina would often catch her staring at the portrait with a strange smile on her face, an action she interpreted as silence, mocking laughter. A week later, Kaina could stand it no more and asked her grandmother to take the artwork down. Posh, said the old woman. I'll take this down when they throw me in my shroud. She pondered this for a bit, then turned to Kaina and dropped to one knee. Listen to me, girl. Seeing this picture makes me happy in a way I've never felt before. And it makes me want to go on so that someday you can feel the same happiness. It was a moment that burned itself in Kaina's memory, a perfect blend of pride and love and joy that came together to form a lifelong remembrance. She swore to never forget this moment, to never forget the old woman who had made her place in the world possible. Make me dab! Pshew. Time moves on. People and memories move in and out of a life like ghosts passing through a hall. But this moment will be different, Kaina swore, because I will remember it forever. Forever. Oh my gosh! More novels! Kaina's dream separation. <sighs> Kaina listened to the sound of crackling firewood and stared at the black object on her plate. She'd been pushing it around the wooden disc for a good ten minutes, ignoring the bemused stare of her grandmother. Finally, she summoned her courage and gave the object a brief sniff. A sharp, bitter scent flew up her nostrils and made its home there, causing her face to twist with disgust. Grandma, I can't believe you want me to eat a bug. The old woman threw some more wood on, under the cooking pot and snorted. It's no bug, you fool girl. It's a berry. Why the hell would I be feeding you bugs? Yeah, well, it sure looks like a bug, said Kaina, and I think it's burnt or something because it smells terrible. But that Kaina held her nose and threw the berry in her mouth, chewing as little as possible. Oh yeah, that's terrible, all right. Why, you little brat, laughed the old woman. Look at the sass on you. You've been spending too much time with me, and that's a fact. Five years had passed since the moment when Gra Kaina's grandmother saved her from the bullies. As, a, as is often with the way with two stubborn people, their relationship had grown in, t in fits and starts, but moved forward all the same. Meals that used to be somber affairs were now filled with laughter and hurled abuse in equal measure. Kaina could not remember a time when she had been happier. As the years went by, Kaina started to shoulder more and more of the daily responsibilities. Her grandmother's legs grew weaker by the day, and she could no longer do more many of the chores she used to take for granted. And so this morning found Kaina lacing up her work boots with a breakfast of burned berry rolling through her belly. Where are you going today? asked Grandma suddenly. Kaina looked up surprised. The old woman rarely asked for specifics anymore. Well, I was gonna go check out the Kelma trees and see if they were ripe. I thought we could make some jam or something. Oh, and I'm going to pick up some flagstones, so I need to take the wheelbarrow. Flagstones? What in the hell for? Kaina stared at her grandmother, then held out an arm and swept it around their home. Constructed mostly of cloth, rope, and rubble, the old place sagged like a boxer in the final rounds. Grandma, a dying cat would shoot through this house. I'm going to build a stone wall so we have some protection. The old woman laughed, exposing her toothless grin to the world. 
Ah, uh, Goram, girl, if a bunch of thieves want to ransack this old place, let them come. We got nothing worth stealing anyway. I'm not worried about thieves, I'm worried about shades. People saw one west of the village yesterday. Kinda such a good girl, best girl. I know, like, she had such a hard life, but she, like, kept persevering. She's awesome. The old woman tilted her head and stared at her granddaughter. I need some water. Ooh. Hmm. Well, shoot. I don't know why you have to do it today. We can worry about it some other... Grandma, no. If I don't go to the Kelma trees, we won't eat tonight. You know that. A confused expression passed across the woman's face, and for a moment she was a small child lost to the carnival. Yes, she said after a bit. Yes, of course you're right. I'm sorry, Kaina. Lately, it seems my mind is... She didn't finish the thought, instead walking over to her nightstand and gently taking the wreath of lunar tears from the drawer. The flower's petals had aged to a brilliant whiteness, and Kaina thought it was more beautiful now than the day she first received it. You're going to be a true woman soon, Grandma said as she placed the flowers in the girl's hair. So that means less chatter about shades and building defensive walls and more talk about how beautiful you've become. Annoyed, Kaina reached up to remove the garland, but the look on her grandmother's face stopped her hand. You're a beautiful thing, said the old woman, and there ain't another like you in all the world. I'm very proud of you. Okay, Grandma, that's enough Goram compliments for one day. Such a mouth on you. Where did that come from? Gee, I wonder. I'll teach you to sass me, girl, yelled Grandma. Suddenly, she lurched forward and grabbed Kaina by the ears, pulling her around the room with a crazed grin on her face. Grandma, yelled Kaina with a quaking voice. Grandma, stop it. What the hell? The old woman stared at her and blinked, then slowly held her wrinkled hands out as if it was the first time she had ever seen them. Oh, oh, I, I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry, girl. Sometimes my mind just... Kaina thought the look on her grandmother's face was the most heartbreaking thing she had ever seen. Listen, she began. Maybe I should stay home after all. No, I won't have you stay here to keep an eye on the old kasha like me. You go get your fruit and your wall and whatnot. I'll be fine. And when you come back, I'll have a nice grasshopper dinner waiting for you. Kaina rolled her eyes, then kissed her grandmother on the forehead and made ready to depart, trying desperately to ignore the worry that was gnawing at the walls of her heart. Kaina could feel the old woman's eyes watching her as she moved down the path. Don't turn around. Don't turn around, she told herself. But in the end, the temptation was too great. She spun on her heel for one final look and saw a small, bent woman standing in front of a ramshackle hut with a sad expression on her face. God, she looks so old now. It's like the wind could reach down and just carry her away. Feel so bad for her. I know. She did not deserve the crappy life she had. Kaina worried about her grandmother all day, causing her work to suffer. What little fruit she could collect was tossed carelessly into the wheelbarrow, and she only found a couple of stones before losing interest in the project. Finally, as dusk approached, she decided to call it a day. Cursing herself for the lack of focus, Kaina pushed a nearly empty wheelbarrow back down the path. As she crested the final hill, she suddenly froze in place. The wheelbarrow fell from her fingers and collapsed on its side, sending a few pieces of wrinkled brown fruit rolling back down the hill. Her gaze was transfixed by a thick black cloud that hovered just ahead. Tracing its path with a finger, Kaina suddenly felt her stomach knot in on itself. No. Oh gods, no! Her grandmother's house was ablaze, the flames licking up as if trying to touch the side itself. Grandma? Grandma! Kaina ran th then, faster than she had ever moved in her life. Once she tripped on a stone and went sprawling into the rocky ground, but she leapt to her feet and continued running, unmindful of the blood that spilled from her wounded hands and knees. As she got closer and closer, Kaina's mind began to race in time with her footballs. It's too dark. It's too dark. Not just fire. Can't be fire. Too much smoke. Gotta save her. Gotta save her. She burst into the front yard and came to a sudden halt, her worst suspicions confirmed. The smoke from the fire was mingling with the thick, inky blackness of an enormous shade. The massive creature supported itself on its three twisted feet and achieved balance through means of a large armored tail. Scales, horns, and claws sprouted from its body in a random chaotic pattern, giving it the appearance of a lizard designed by some insane god. Seeing Kaina, it let out a roar and flicked its tail, sending small whirlwinds spinning around a yard. For a moment, the creature retreated into a shimmering, inky blackness, as if her mind was unable to comprehend that such a thing could actually exist. But then a smell hit her, a blend of rot rotted meat and excrement, and the horror became real once more. The creature bellowed again, and this time Kaina responded with a scream of her own. All right, you bastard, she thought as her scream echoed off the high cliffs around them. It's you or me. Let's go. The shade eyed Kaina with bemused interest, then it began looking for her, from her to the house and back again, as if urging her to look at the destruction it had so gleefully wrought. With a dread building in her heart, Kaina glanced towards the house. Though the, Through the smoke and flames, she spotted a small figure struggling to escape the ruins. Grandma! At the sound of her voice, the old woman began fr waving frantically. She's alive, thought Kaina. Alive! Kaina's legs sprang to life as she raced across the yard toward the flaming wreckage of the house. Before she could advance more than a few steps, the shade opened its mouth and let out a roar powerful enough to uproot trees and send them flying. 
The blast sent kind of tumbling through the air before smashing her against the rocky earth. Stars danced in front of her eyes as she tried to remember how her legs worked. Get up! Get up! Get up, get up, get up, get up now! As Kinda of struggled to her feet, the stage shamp shade stomped toward the house and pinned her grandmother to the ground with the tip of a claw. The old woman struggled to move the claw from her stomach, but she might as well have been pushing a mountain. She coughed briefly, sending a small spray of blood into the air, then collapsed to the ground, her energy spent. Kinda of lurched to her feet, only to fall back to the earth with a gasp. Her ankles were on fire. One or both of them were surely broken. Ignoring the pain that screamed through her body, she began dragging herself across the ground, leaving a drunken trail of dust and blood in her wake. Grandma, hold on. Just a little longer. Her grandmother's face was turning blue, her eyes rolling back until only the whites were exposed. Kinda pulled herself across the ground with maddening slowness, the distance seeming to increase with every second that passed. The shade glanced between the two women and flicked at its tongue, its mouth, giant mouth turning up at the corners. Short panting breaths belched from somewhere deep inside its core. Bastard, laughing at us? She had no idea how such a mindless creature could experience emotion, but there could be no doubt the shade was taking joy in their suffering. Yeah, I see your plan. The shade moved its claw slightly, allowing Grandma to breathe again. It was clearly keeping her alive, only to snuff her out in her life when Kaina Klein was close enough to touch her. I'm gonna kill this bastard. Summoning all of her strength, Kaina rose to her feet. There was a sickening snap from her right ankle as the foot twisted backward, but she forced it from her mind and began to hobble toward the monster. Pulling a small knife from the pouch at her waist, she leapt onto the foot that pinned her grandmother and plunged it, the weapon deep. Give her back, she screamed. Give her back to me! It was like stabbing a rock. After a few swipes, the knife broke at the hilt with a dull snap. The shade panted laughter again, then raised its tail and sent it rushing through the air toward the young girl that was lashed to its foot. Kinda never had a chance. The tail struck her square in the chest and sent her crashing into the burning wreckage of the home. As she lay on the ground with blood pouring from multiple wounds, a small, weak voice spoke up. Kinda? Kinda's vision blurred, but she forced herself to focus on the sound. Finally, her eyes cleared enough for her to make out her grandmother's hands reaching out to her through the smoke. Grandma? Kinda, you gotta run. You can't best this one. Kinda grabbed the hands as and held on with all her strength. Grandma, come on, we have to go. The old woman coughed loudly. One of her hands, slick with blood, slipped from Kinda's grasp and thumped to the ground below. Grandma, no, no! I said, run, Goramit. You have to, have to live. You have to get through. The thought would stay forever unfinished. Before she could say another word, the shade's clawed foot descended, smashing through the remains of the roof and down upon the shattered figure of the old woman. Blood oozed from the gaps in the creature's toes as a terrible putrid smell assaulted Kaina's nose once again. That's one mean human. Yeah, because all the shade monsters, like, they were originally human, but because it's been so long, their minds became, like, slowly got, like, unraveled. And they just started to become more like mindless beasts. I mean, they, they still have emotions. They still know how to think. But like, yeah, they were slowly losing their humanity. Because they were separated from so long, for so long from their body. She stared at the foot, dumbfounded, convinced that what she was seeing could not possibly be real. When the creature finally lifted its appendage, all that remained underneath was a twisted, unrecognizable mass of rubble and red. Her grandmother was gone. Kaina blinked, trying to feel the hands which had been in hers just a moment before. For a fleeting instant, she could remember the warmth of that embrace, the trembling of the fingers, but the then the sensation drifted away on the breeze and was gone. Memories flashed through Kaina's mind, one after the other, faster and faster, until they became a meaningless jangle of noise. Kaina screamed then, a thunderous sound that echoed off the cliffs and seemed to roll away forever. The shade eased forward, black ichor pouring from its mouth and dissolving into the smoke on the ground below. The other shook with every step as it crept toward its prey. Kaina's body slowly rose as if controlled by a mad puppet master. Her arms and legs were bent at impossible angles, her head lolled dangerously to the side. Yet somehow she managed to stand. Staring at the shade, her eyes began to glow with a deep red fire. The creature, so confident just moments before, took a slow, hesitant step backward, trying to discern if this broken human could possibly pose a threat. Kaina seized a moment. Laughing like a mad woman, she leapt into, into the air and plunged the shattered hilt of her knife deep into the leg of the shade. The shade shook Kaina off like a fly, sending her crashing to the earth once again. Her chest rose and fell slowly, as if a great weight were resting on it. Most moist sounds of pain echoed through her mind. Something warm and thick oozed from her ears. Is that blood? I think it is. I think I'm bleeding to death. No. Can't... Can't die. Grandma told me to live. Deep inside Kaina's mind, something finally broke. The sound, the pain, the smoke and flames. All of it faded away until all that remained was a single incantation repeated over and over again. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it, 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 kill it,
and longer and longer. Woo! Novel part is over for now. I think there's more novel parts later, but my throat was starting to hurt. <laughs> And now you know why her legs are messed up. The beast approaches. Oh, I know. Books are fun. Yeah, they are. Dude, I'm level 30. Prepare to die. Dark blast ons, though. Yeah. What anger this creature must have. How did it even survive these past five years? Not gonna let this happen again. It dies today. I saw it. It's, <laughs> it's not the blade, but the skill of the user. Strike it down. It's like I'm super powerful or something. It's like I fought him before. <laughs> Dangerous forget. <laughs> I heard of danger noodle, but not danger spaghetti. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this shade didn't talk. I guess he was just a mindless whatever. Oh no, I hope right after this there aren't more novel scenes. No, 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 no. Kinda wake up! Kinda wake up! <laughs> wake up! No, it's a novel scene! Uh, Kindness Dreams Encounter. Mother frack. Gently, weakly, softly. The shade, sure that its tormentor was dead, turned and stomped off toward the horizon, stop stopping along the way to bellow one final roar. Couldn't kill it. Shamed beyond imagining, Kaina tried to turn her head to the side, but only succeeded in coughing up a huge gout of blood. It was getting difficult to see, and only after a moment of fierce concentration did she realize that her left eye was gone. Laughing to herself, she turned her remaining eye to the ruins of her home and noticed a ragged stump of an arm resting a few feet away. Yeah, that's fine, she thought with a mad giggle. This is gonna make clapping a real biatch. Ha! Cried, sudden, sir, cried a sudden voice from the depths of her mind. Finally gonna die, are ya? Well, you had it coming. Go to hell, Demo, she thought at the unseen assailant. Go to hell before I pluck out your eyes and feed them to a dog. The voice of her childhood terror evaporated as it spoke, only to be replaced by another, more recent voice. Hold still, said the apothecary, materializing from the ruins like a ghost. I want to draw you. That way you can live forever. No, stop. Don't want to live forever. I want to die right here. I see, he said quietly. Well, if that's what you want. The spectral shopkeeper fluttered in and out of existence for a moment, then produced a piece of paper and sketched quickly. After a few seconds, he turned a page to Kaida and smiled. Since you rejected my offer, I decided to draw someone else. It was a picture of her grandmother, real as life. Kaida opened her mouth to thank the man, but stopped as the picture began to blacken in the middle. Before she could say anything, dozens of multi-legged insects began to swarm across the image, tearing at it with sharpened pincers. Stop! No! Don't hurt that picture! Kaina reached out with her remaining arm and waved futilely in at the air. To her surprise, the insects fell off the picture and to the ground below, where they vanished into tiny black tendrils of smoke. Relieved, Kaina turned her good eye back to the picture, but only to open her mouth in a silent scream. The sketch was now, sh now showed her grandmother as she truly was. Smashed, unrecognizable lump of nothing. The apothecary smiled, then broke into a jolly dance. See that? He cried as he danced the jig. It's perfect now. She looks just like you. Ha cha cha. Wait. Ha cha cha cha. I look like that? Oh god. Oh god, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Drowning in despair, Kaina laid her head back into the mud, and the smoke of her ruined house and waited for the end to come. But just before she let everything go, an unfamiliar voice began whispering in her ear. Ain't you got a wish, sunshine? The voice was a vulgar and fierce at the same time, as if insanity had somehow found a way to take form. Kaina wanted to scream as the voice crawled under her skin, but her lungs refused to work. You know, a wish, like a prayer or something? Why don't you get on your knees? That's who the voice is! Now I know who he is, Spencer. Why don't you get on your knees and start praying to heaven? 
Please, Invisible Man in the Sky, save me, save me! <laughs> kind of finally resorted to shouting at the voice with her mind. I don't make wishes. They don't come true for me. I'm a curse, a freak. I should be left to die. The other voice boomed in her ears. <laughs> oh god, you are the best. Kinda glanced down and saw a black, shiny substance oozing from her legs. She tried to brush it away, but her remaining arm would no longer respond. The substance slowly crept around her feet and then began moving up toward the rest of her body. Is this death? Is this what it's like? Or is my mind just losing itself? She could feel the slime oozing upward, feeling feel the hot searing pain it left in its wake. Whatever else might be happening, she was still alive and this was real. Come on, said the voice, let it go. Kinda tried to ignore the voice and concentrate on the pain, but the newcomer would have none of it. Don't ignore me, sunshine. You're ready to give up. Ready to die. So why not let me have it? Have what? Your body. Come on. Give it to me. Give it to me. I want to stand on the ground. Feel the rain. Taste the wind. The voice paused as if, it's looking, as if looking at its lips. When it resumed, it was filled with mad, unabated joy. And I want to take your hands and use them to choke the goram life out of people. I want to tear out their throats and bathe them in the blood, just like before. In response, kind of shifted her head and vomited. The warmth of it crept down her front and mingled with the pain of encroaching black ooze. Are you a shade? Ha <laughs> ha Yeah, maybe. What of it? The slime reached her face and crept up past her nose and slowly oozed into the socket of her missing eye. The moment it touched her brain, kind of was struck by the most powerful sensation she'd ever felt in her life. It was ecstasy. She wanted to scream with delight, but all she could manage was a small, whispered moan. Feels good, don't it? Asked the voice with a chuckle. Yeah, what can I say? I know how to please the ladies. Now give me that body. Come on, give me the body. I'll give you more of this feeling. It's fair trade. A black lump began to protrude from Kaina's side. As she watched it, it grew longer and thicker, eventually taking the form of her missing arm. I can see better, she thought. My eye must be growing back too. The slime reached up to envelop the rest of her face, but she managed to brush it away. Stop, she whispered, marveling at how she regained her voice. Stop. The black goose hesitated as if considering this oppressed, then quickly shimmered down her body before disappearing in a cloud of smoke. Oh, what the hell, sunshine, screamed the voice. We had a deal. I thought you wanted to die. Grandma said, I can't die yet. A brief image showed her grandmother, bloodied and broken, flashed before her eyes. She saw the shade that killed her and heard its mocking laughter, then closed her eyes and forced the image from her mind. Her whole body was quaking with rage. When she opened her eyes again, they burned bright red. That thing took my grandmother. I have to kill it before I die. Kinda glanced down and saw a mysterious pattern, the pattern of the shades, burn itself into her left arm. Well, I'll be damned, said the voice cheerfully. Look at that, sunshine. I think you and me are gonna be good friends now. Kinda stared intently at her arm. The more emotional she felt, the more the letter seemed ready to puncture her skin and began infecting the rest of her body. The arm clearly had a will of its own now. Stop. Gotta stop. Holding her left arm in her right, Kinda took a deep breath and tried to calm herself. Come on, don't fight it, pleaded the voice. Hates my favorite dish and I'm hungry. Let it go. Feel the anger. Burn with the fire of revenge. Thirst for blood. Then go out there and... Shut up. Shut up and get the hell out of my body. Your body? Oh, that's rich, sunshine. Real rich. Look, why don't you just up and die so I can have this body all to myself? What do you say? I bet those buddies of yours in the eerie would love to see it dead. Kinda grabbed a nearby shard of glass and tried to saw off the shade-infected portion of her side. Before she could, her darkened left arm grabbed her right wrist, crushing it. Kinda screamed and dropped the shard as the sound of bone crushing, crunching on bone filled the air. Ha <laughs> ha stupid idiot girl. You're possessed now, sunshine, and there ain't no going back. The voice laughed again, a loud, long wail that seemed to go on without end. Possessed, whispered Kinda. Yeah, possessed. You and me, we got what you might call a timeshare arrangement. Remember how folks used to think you were a freak? Well, wait till they get a load of you now. Kinda looked up, tears in her eyes. This guy seems smaller somehow, darker. Is this because of that shade? Is this how they see the world? So, listen, purred the voice. I know this whole possession theme seems a bit sudden, but it ain't all bad. There's plenty in it for you, too. I'm a very powerful creature, sunshine, and now that power belongs to you. You got enemies? People you want to kill? I can make it happen. That little fat kid who kept picking on you? That big old shade that squashed your granny? We'll wrap them up in their own our souls, gross. No more abuse for you, sunshine. No more pain. Wait, said Kinda. Your shade. Why would you help me kill another shade? What, you think I'm some kind of racist, some killing snob? I don't give a good goram who you murder, honey pants. I just want to drink from the well. Kinda considered this as she struggled to her feet, the power of the shade coursing through her. The smoke from her house was drifting away with the wind, and she enjoyed the way the cool evening breeze felt on her new left arm. After a long pause, the voice spoke up again. So, uh, how about it? You and me? We could have some good times together. Look, I'll even take care of the bloody part if you want, if you don't want. F off, arsehole of mutter, kinda. I'll handle the killing. 
<laughs> Scoop the voice. Look at you go. Oh, sunshine, we're gonna have so much fun. So listen, my name's Tyran, and if you ever need me, I'll be hanging out in this piece of meat you call a heart. Was it Tyran or Tyran? Now get to it! The more you kill, the more your heart turns rotten and sour. And I like rotten and sour. Kinda of found herself nodding at the voice. Yeah, she said. Yeah, I think this could work. I'm gonna find that shit and I'm gonna strangle it with its own guts. And when I'm done, I'm gonna do the same to you, Tyran. Count on it. Ha! <laughs> laughed Tyran. I'm sharp bigger than you, so good luck with that. Oh, and hey, one more thing. Right now, you and me are sharing this body, but if you ever run out of hate, if you ever, you know, go soft, then I'm gonna take over everything. So keep on killing, Sunshine, and watch your back. The voice grew fainter and gradually faded away. Fading to somewhere deep inside Kaida herself. Kaida waited until she was sure the voice was gone, then waved her new left arm around a few times. It feels perfectly normal, she thought. It feels like mine. Desperately, she bent, poking and prodding at her new limb, determined to find something wrong with it. She didn't want it to feel normal. That would mean the creature inside her had already won. I'm not a shade. I'm Kaida. Repeating this mantra in her head, she slowly began digging through the rubble of her house, being careful to ignore a certain red-stained spot in the corner. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity of heartbreaking work, she found what she was looking for. It was the wreath of lunar tears. Though it had been through hell and back, the garland's petals were as bright as ever. Kaida started to place it in her hair, then slowly lowered the wreath and stared at it. I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm so sorry. But I don't deserve to wear this anymore. I'm possessed, corrupted, a freak. And this time, I don't think there's any going back. Holding the flowers to her heart, Kaina fell to the ground and sobbed. As night gradually lightened to dawn and the people of the area arose to their daily lives, she remained in that position as if tears could somehow wash away the horror that now infected her world. No more! Yes! Stay alive. Uh, 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 stay alive. Uh, stay alive. Grandma. Stay alive. Uh, 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 stay alive. You gotta come back to us. Okay, so now that we're on playthrough B, I'm gonna say what kind of secret was. She's a hermaphrodite. She looks like she's in the body of a girl, but she has male uh, oh. sex organs. Hey. But she also has breasts, so I don't know how that works. Uh. Also, I don't know if you've noticed me doing this. Probably not because my camera's so small. But anytime we get a crotch shot of Kaina, I tend to look at it because there was a, either an interview or something that said, yeah, we gave Kaina a small bu bulge. That's how you could tell that she's a uh, hermaphrodite. You were the one calling me. So I'm like, really? Were Can you? you see it? So she is a puta. Yes, she You're is. Still the thing is, nice her original body is a girl. It's just that you when they made her shell and they separated her soul, Thank you. um, so, for some reason something went wrong and she got both Welcome male back. and female sex organs. So her original self well, is a girl. You grew up. So, how long has it been? Five years. Also, there was a, um, there was a chapter in the near uh, novel where it focused on Kaina. Well, it was about Kaina, but the main character was a nun who was passing through the airy, and she was like, oh, I'm gonna be a good person, I'm gonna, like, Shit. I can skip all this dialogue because we saw this. Um, but yeah, uh, a nun was passing through the airy, and she's like, I'm gonna help out people in this dark times, like, with all these shades. Kaina waking from her long petrified But sleep. um everyone was like, Oh yeah, stay away from Kaina Me because um she's a freak. Kindness. Not only because she was a hermaphrodite, but because I'll she was also a shade. A and they're like, Yeah, Let she's crazy, stay away way. from her. And the nun's like, Nonsense, everyone is a child yes. of God, and it's we should all extend kindness to her. So when she first saw Kaina, she's just like, Whoa, she's a beautiful girl. I don't know why people are freaked out about her. Are you kidding me? Look at their clothes, Leah. When we fight them, their white thing is off. But yeah, um, the nun was like, "Oh, she's so pretty. There's nothing wrong with her." Uh, and then kind of was just like, "Okay, well, bye. I'm going to go off and um, kill some shades, or do something." Like uh, the nun left her, and then um, oh no, the nun was staying at Kaina's house, and she's just like, "Yeah, whatever, stay here." And then um, she. In the middle of the night, she woke up to sounds because she thought she heard someone in pain. Like, she heard someone, like, panting. And she was like, oh my gosh, that person's hurt. I gotta go see who it is. And, um... But those feelings are no, wait, was it? Yeah. Anyway, she, the nun was sleeping at someone's house. She heard, like, cries of pain. And they she's like, I gotta go check out what it was. And it turns out the cries of pain were from a shade that was just being killed. And, um... And then she saw kind of jacking herself off. 
because kind of was like, yeah, after I kill shades, um, I get I get horny. And so, so the nun was like, oh my gosh, she really is a freak. Like, I'm not the person. I'm not a bad person. I'm not in the wrong. It's just she's not a normal person. She's a freak of nature. Don't judge me and think I'm a terrible person. But you know, she's not natural. And yeah, that was kind of um, a chapter in the near novel book. Fun times. She saw Kaina do what now? Yeah. She saw a dead shade. She saw Kaina's um, left arm that had the shade in it. And she saw Kaina jacking herself off. Because, you know, uh, Tyran, he's like, I love killing. It's great. So after he kills, he's just like, woohoo, I'm horny. But what good would that even oh my gosh, this is new. I got a fire going. Wait, is that... I'm so happy to get to talk Tyran to you be like crazy. Tyran. Yeah, he is. Yeah, me too. I tried everything I could think of to save you, you know. I polished you with a special cloth. This was I not in the original game, this I... scene. Wait, you poured water on me? <laughs> yeah, but it didn't really do much except make you all shiny. <laughs> hey, Emil. Thanks for saving me. I guess you noticed how I look different now. I'm sorry, Emil. I'm sorry for all of it. Well, I mean, this new form isn't all bad, you know? At least I can look at you when we talk, right? Hey, so why don't you tell me something about yourself? I'm not very interesting. Sorry. I'm still wondering what happened to Emil. Come on. Oh, from what happened to his human body to this? Please? Um. So, he was originally in a human body, Fine. uh, but then Emil's like, hey, I think I found a way to, um, to cure Kaina's petrification. Thing. So they went into this underground, uh, facility in his house. My body is um, and then they, like, traversed it, and then it. they're like, whoa, there's weapon number six me. that got tied up. And he's like, oh, that's why I exist, because I'm a weapon. But one person, my grandmother, um, accepted me just as I was. What was I saying? Oh yeah, he was a weapon no to contain weapon number six, who was gone. his sister. And his sister she was actually the one in, in a gone. giant skeleton body. But after, um, after they defeated her, um, really special to you, huh? he managed to take over her body because in the middle of the battle, yeah. she ate Emil, and so Emil was inside her body. And so before oh, no. she was going to die, she was like, hey, Emil, sup? And, um, we cured your petrification, yeah. We so I think she gave him her your body. In my body. I know we can do it if we all work together. Except his sister, the weapon, was a giant skeleton, and he's just, like, his normal size yeah, skeleton. It'll probably be super easy. But yeah, because of that, his eyes don't have petrification power anymore. Okay. Can we just forget I told you about that? Dan Japan never runs out of crazy ideas. Yep. I mean, the world of Nier is based on separating your soul from your body and making a new shell for your soul to reside in while your body is just, like, there to prevent you getting either the black scrawl or the white chlorination syndrome. Oh, weird. Jellitos made a new friend, and guess what? He's a king! I wish I had some friends. Sleep well? Sure. And yet your red eyes tell a different tale. Don't be so hard on yourself, lad. I need to go see Devola and Popola. Very well. I need to get- oh wait, uh, I need to check all my items! I should have all my weapons. Yes, I do. Okay, um... How much money do I have, though? Or, uh, yeah, I'm still poor. Gold Moonflower Seed, okay. Okay, nothing out here. I wish I had some friends, damn bro, me too, huh? <laughs> okay, so if I examine this, it's going to be the, um... 
the world of nightmares, but I don't want to do that yet. Okay. And my throat is getting real sore because um, I've read all of Kaina's things. But yeah, uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to be doing the World of Nightmares books to get the last three. Wait! Where's my weapon? Oh, that's after ending. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I just have to do the 15 Nightmares, get three more weapons, play through the game. Yeah, baby, baby. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. But yeah, I really gotta end now. My throat hurts. So um, yeah, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye!